What's going on guys, it's Bronson Men's Comics. It's Friday, we made it to the end of the week. So cheers to you, cause it is last call and we are talking pre-FOC. That's right, we're gonna give you 10 picks that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. Before we get into that, with me as always is my co-host, Jack DeMeo, AKA Mr. Bolo. What's going on, Simple Men's Comics family, YouTube comic community, CBSI Nation, Bolo Nation. Happy to be here for the last call, our pre-FOC show, every Friday night right here on the Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. Right, so real quick, shout out to Hail to the Redskins, Clinton Portis, number 26. Cheers to him. And you might be asking, hey, what's Final Order Cutoff? What's pre-FOC? FOC, of course, stands for Final Order Cutoff. Final Order Cutoff is the last chance you have to get orders in before Diamond cuts the orders off. So if you want the full list for every comic book that's hitting Final Order Cutoff, make sure you head over to simplemanscomics.com. Have the list up there for you. We are going to give you our 10 picks. Some are spec picks. Some are reader picks. Some are cover art picks. But we got 10 books, and that's what we're here to talk to you about tonight. Right, Jack? Absolutely. Like you said, these are our 10 picks. Um, you know, it's not the the most robust week for um, pre-FOC books, but I think we've narrowed it down to a good selection of 10 books, good mix of publishers, and I'm excited to talk about these books. Right. That's one thing to bring to attention because you're not going to have great books each and every week or we would all be retired on comic books because there's all these great books coming out. There are interesting books. There are great reads. There are probably some underlines that will pop. That's the good thing about FOC is that buzz hasn't been built up yet. But either way, we are going to present this to you right now, starting with Captain Marvel number 11. This is going to have a Mark Brooks cover, as well as an Elizabeth Torque Mary Jane variant. Right, so now this story is all about the ending of one story arc and moving into the next one. Obviously, with issue number eight, we had the debut of the brand new villain for Captain Marvel star. Um, and we already know from the solicitations, the advertisements that Marvel's putting out there, issue number 12, we're going to get that dark Captain Marvel. So here we have the solicitation saying this is Captain Marvel's last stand. The world has turned its back on her. Her powers are fading and Carol Danvers has never felt more lost. Now, we know from just experiencing comics, right, Brian? When Marvel puts out that advertisement for Dark Captain Marvel in issue 12, doesn't always mean that first appearance is coming from issue 12, does it? No, because we learned that with Star in general. Exactly. So why would we expect it again this time? You know what? I think Dark Captain Marvel is going to show up in this issue. Now, I can't guarantee that. That's what speculation is. It's a guess. Um, but my best educated guess, based on past experience, uh, based on years in comic books, um, but again, based on what we've seen just within this run of books, there's a lot of people anticipating that Dark Captain Marvel. As soon as that image went out, we saw that shared all over social media, didn't we, Brian? Exactly. So it, there's definitely a lot of people out there kind of uh, feverishly waiting for that Dark Captain Marvel. I expect that to be a first appearance that's hot. So that's why we're talking about it right here on the pre-FOC show because – you know, it, I'm not saying go all in on this book, but it, it's a solid, educated guess that we may see Dark Captain Marvel show up. Some people will probably call it a cameo in one of those last page, splash page appearances. So that's what I'm looking at when I see this book on the FOC list. Right. And because of that, I would actually go with the Mark Brooks cover on this rather than the, seri the <laughs> rather than the Mary Jane. Mary Jane is nice and all. I like Elizabeth Torque, but I'm sticking with that Mark Brooks because it ties directly to the story. And Absolutely. we've seen those cover arts already for the number 12 coming out. So number 11, as you mentioned, would be a great pickup. And that's why it's on our FOC list for this week. Then the second book we're going to talk about tonight is Batman number 81. This is going to have a regular cover by John Romita Jr. As well as a regular price cover B. Francesco Mattina variant. Right, and it's time for the big showdown, Brian. We knew this was coming with issue 77, with that uh, death of Alfred scene. Um, we knew that at some point 
Batman had to get retribution from Bane, and it looks like this is the issue where it's going down. Um, Solicitation says it's time for the big showdown. Batman is calling Bane out. But the Dark Knight detective is ready to take on this foe who broke him worse than ever before. Um, You know, what else can stand in Batman's way? Um, And it looks like uh, they kind of hint at possibly Robin being involved as well. So uh, the solicitation says, tread lightly on not only the lives of your son, but your trusted friends hang in the balance. So could we see another death? Um, Is that where, you know, Tom King's going to go with this? Or will Batman finally kind of get that payback on Bane that he's had kind of waiting ever since Bane broke his back and then broke Alfred's neck. Right. The only thing is, is my concern is if there's a death, we know this is the fi- the end of Tom King's run. So how long would that death stick? And it depends on the character. But I actually, we kind of talked about this. I like that cover A from J.R. J.R. or John Romita Jr. Um, I'm usually not a big fan of his covers, but I like that. That Francesco Matina though. Super sick, that callback to Bane breaking his back. Yes. But um, I don't know which one I want more. I'll probably go with the cover A. And then I think I'm just going to get both. Be done yeah, it, it. it could be a good set. And especially if you already invested in Batman 77, this could be a good kind of set to sell with Batman 77. But I'd like to caution everybody, this isn't a really a speculation pick. This is an example of what we talked about with the intro of the show. Some of these picks are spec picks. We gave you a little nugget of like speculation experience with Captain Marvel 11, but this is really a reader buzz pick. This is a, you know, if, if, if you had really enjoyed Batman 77 and then you were like Brian and I, and you didn't love the departure to uh, Tom Selleck Batman um, <laughs> that we went on afterwards, um, this gets us back into the story. And um, this is a good reader buzz pick. Um, so that's mostly why I think this book ends up on this list tonight. Right. Right before you gave caution, I was going to say, I hope I hope the story is as good as the covers. But Yeah, right? Because those covers are fantastic. Yeah, and you guys watching, let us know in the comments. Are, are you going to be picking these covers up? Let us know. Um, as well, do us a favor, click that thumbs up button while you're watching this. And if you have books that you like for FOC, put those in the comments as well. And coming in next, we have Silver Surfer Black number five. Now, this is going to have five different covers for it. You have the regular Trad Moore cover. You have a David Nakayama Mary Jane variant. There's also a Foreshadow variant. There's a Ron Lim variant, as well as another variant by the same artist who does the Foreshadow variant, which I can't pronounce the name, C-I-A-N Tormi. That's what I'll say. <laughs> right, Brian, but this this um, entry right here is all about the solicitation. We're looking at the final stand against Null. Now, we've talked about Null um, on the Hot 10 show, on the Hot and Cold show, on uh, the Bolo show, on just about every show on this channel. Um, Null has really captivated readers both in the Venom series and here in Silver Surfer Black. So um, I think everybody's ready for this final showdown. This, of course, is issue five in a five-issue miniseries. So we're looking at the epic conclusion of this Donny Cates Trad Moore story. Um, if you're looking from speculation purposes, I would probably say to stick with the cover A or the foreshadow variant or the, uh, I don't know if it's an incentive or the other variant. I would say that those Mary Jane variants just historically won't do what you would hope, but buy what you like. If you love that cover, by all means, David Nakayama is a good dude and a good artist. But, you know, the the solicitation is uh, hard selling here, Brian. We see, uh, trust us, you won't want to miss this epic conclusion. And my belief is something that ends in this story will play out into a future Donny Kate story or a future story that will spin off in Marvel, similar to what happened with Cosmic Ghost Rider out of Thanos. Right, and I... I... I would believe that other variant, that last one we mentioned, is probably a one in twenty-five. Looking at the track record of the way it's been going, right. so I don't, I don't see that right now. So, but I imagine that's the way it will be. Yeah, and I have, I wonder about that foreshadow variant. Like, what do they mean by that? That's a term we haven't seen used on variant covers. It makes me wonder. Um, reminds me of like the classified variants. Is there something in that foreshadow variant that they cannot show us yet that would give away a portion of the story? We know how speculators love that. But this is a reader buzz pick. 
that could play into a speculation pick, depending. But it's very hard to tell at this stage of the game. But we've also talked a lot, Brian, on this channel about selling as sets, right? And I think this is a prime set that you're going to be able to sell and make money. So if you've already been buying those Silver Surfer books, I don't need to tell you to jump on issue five. I'm sure you're already there. And the next book, we're going to move over and give some indie comics some love. And we're talking about Something is Killing the Children, number two. This is from Boom Studios. Everyone's well aware of the first issue. Everyone's well aware of the additional printings of that first issue. But we're getting issue number two, Hit and Final Order Cutoff, this Monday night. It's got a regular cover, as well as a regular priced variant by Bertram. Right, and the solicitation lets us know that children are dying in the town of Archer's Peak, and the ones who survive bring back terrible stories. A strange woman named Erica Slaughter has appeared and says to fight these monsters behind the murders, but can not possibly true. Monsters aren't real, are they? Again, that's a general solicitation for the series as a whole, but if you read issue number one, you know that that issue was action-packed. Most of you really enjoyed that issue as evidenced by the late printings that we've gone to. Um, and I think that most people who read issue number one are going to be on board to read issue number two. Um, Brian, you mentioned the two covers. I'm a fan of cover A. I think that Erica Slaughter character is a incredible and unique character. I think that's the one to go with. If you're specking on this series one day being, say, adapted or optioned, I think she is... Uh, the character to really put your money behind. Um, having said that, let us know in the comments what you think between the two covers, which one you like better. But Something is Killing the Children number two, I would not be surprised if it goes to a later print as well, similar to the way Once in Future number two did. Right, and I'll tell you, you mentioned that cover A, and one thing a lot of people consider some spec news or what they consider might be a popular character is when they start seeing people cosplay. And we're already seeing people cosplay yes. as this character at conventions, at different shows, just in general. So either way, that's something to take note of. But something that's killing children number two is on our FOC list this week. So Guardians of the Galaxy number 10. This is going to have two different covers. There's a regular cover by Patrick Zercher. There's also an Arthur Adams Mary Jane variant. Now if you haven't picked up on it, this is going to be a month where there's a lot of Mary Jane variants from Marvel with a bunch of different artists. But I'm sticking with the regular cover on this. This is following that whole death of Rocket, right? The whole story arc we've been reading. But what we got going on this book, Jack? Right here with the threat of the Universal Church of Truth looms. Um... The question is, can Rocket hold out long enough to help? Now, that right there just tells you we may not be seeing Rocket for too much longer. There's a lot of speculators who felt burnt, who bought into this issue seven. Incredible cover art with that bloody Rocket hand. And we got that last page, splash page of Rocket in the hospital looking rough. <laughs> and then uh, they turned that into an amazing second print. Um, and that was kind of a big speculation miss for a lot of people. But here's the thing. The story arc is called Death of Rocket. Um, Donnie has killed – I say Donnie like we're old college buddies, right? Um, yeah, like new kids on the block or something. Yeah, yeah, right, Donnie. <laughs> but, um, you know, Donnie Cates has been known to kill characters, especially uh, animalistic characters um, for sure, if you remember the his uh, run with the humans. But um, I – I think that we're going to finally see quite possibly the death of Rocket Raccoon. I mean, you look at the cover for cover A and it's uh, got the grave and here lies Rocket. Um, could be wrong. Could be faking us out again. But I don't know how big of a spec play that is. Nonetheless, it'll be a good story to read. And Brian, you and I have talked about this on the channel before. Like, you know, with all the great things Donny Cates is doing, Absolute Carnage, Venom, um, Silver Surfer Black. This is just an underrated run. People are not reading this run like they are some of those other uh, series, and it's not getting the reader buzz it truly deserves. Right, and Donny Cates is up getting ready to come to the end of his run on Guardians, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's coming up soon. So I would think he's going to end with a bang, wouldn't you? I would think so.
Then this next book we're gonna talk about comes from Image Comics and it is the marked number one. It's gonna have a regular cover as well as a regular price variant with double art duties by Brian Haberlin as well as Jared Van Dyke. Right, and the mark look like cool young influencers, but beneath their designer clothes, their bodies are tattooed with magical glyphs of an ancient order that secretly protects the world against evil forces. With no new occult threats, the mark use their tattooed powers solely for the pursuit of personal pleasures until a young woman named Lisa creates a dangerous new form of a hybrid sorcery. The party is over for the mark. Do you believe in magic, terrifying, soul-destroying magic? And here we're looking at a double-sized premiere issue. We're looking at a book that was on the cover of previews and a book that had a San Diego Comic-Con preview. So it does seem like Image is all in on this one. This was a book I was kind of ignoring a bit, but I think when you add up all of those factors, it's one that needs to be paid attention to from a speculation perspective. So Jack mentioned that SDCC preview issue. It's important to know those are currently selling between $18 $25 on eBay right now. But Image must feel something about this title in order to create a preview for people to see beforehand. We kind of like this. We like Image books. So this might be one to take note, just as Jack said. So I'm definitely picking that up. I actually like that kind of double-sided B cover. It looks. At first, I thought it was going to be two connecting variants. But it's all solicited as one cover B. So I'm torn again between the covers. But either way, I think both of them are cool. And this story sounds interesting for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And let's not forget, think about Once in Future, think about Oblivion Song. Those advanced copies shot up to over $100. So if this series takes off, there could be a lot of room for profit in that advanced issue. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, sorry. So the next issue we're going to talk about is spider-man number two we were easily surprised by how much we liked the first issue neither of us were expecting that jack actually did a whole long-term play just last night on the bolo show about spider-man number one we're hitting final order cutoff for number two coming this monday night but what do you got to say about this book jack well you know brian not a whole lot because the tough thing is the solicitation really doesn't give us much information it really just poses the question of how we're going to deal with the events of issue number one and uh you know this is really pure speculation um we're all waiting to see when is benji parker going to put that suit on right it's got to be inevitable i've got a source telling me it's not going to happen until issue three or four but i don't know if that is the case or if we're going to see it in issue two like most people are assuming i think most people are going to jump on board issue two assuming that's when he's going to don that spider suit but either way from a reader buzz standpoint i was blown away by issue number one and i expect uh issue number two to follow that up and i'm excited to read it i'm excited to check it out this is a book i'm all over and i've mentioned it on the bolo show i'm not a huge spider-man fan or spider-man reader but I am all over this entire miniseries at this point. That's how good I think issue number one was. And heading back over to the indies from Dark Horse, we have The Mask. I pledge allegiance to The Mask. This has a regular cover by Patrick Reynolds, as well as a B regular priced, as well as a regular priced variant by Raphael Albuquerque. I actually really love the cover A on this one. It's nice to see them bring back the mask. This is going to be a four-issue miniseries. But tell us more about this book, Jack. Right. Now, you said coming back to the indies, but the truth is this is about as mainstream as it gets because most of us of a certain age, Brian, we remember that Jim Carrey classic movie. But if you're only thinking in terms of that movie, you may be missing out on the comic history of the homicidal nature of the mask, a.k.a. Big Head. And we are coming back to this story. Now, this takes place years after the events of the movie and his inception. And people have kind of forgotten about Big Head. But some bizarre Tex Avery-style killings are happening over all over again. And they're on a collision course with a bizarre political campaign where a homicidal maniac wants to make America green again. Just that last line right there, you know, is polarizing. It's going to get people's attention. And no matter what side of the political aisle you, you sit on, it's going to grab you. Um, I like both covers. I'll be picking up both. I want to read this. And I think it's got an outside speculation chance. Another thing I like is 
that it's written by an AMC showrunner. Um, he does a show called Halt and Catch Fire. Truthfully, I don't know what that is. Uh, I watched it. Yeah, period you know, piece, I guess. You know, the 80s guy, the 80s guy watched it because it was basically like the Battle of the PC type thing. There and being go. an IT guy. Great show, by the way. It's got Ronan in it. <laughs> okay. Well, that's not bad. That's better than I thought. They said period piece. They made me think it was like super old timey. But uh, yeah, so, you know, it's written by an AMC showrunner. I would love to see the mask back on either TV or movie and a more gritty, realistic view of the character rather than that slapstick, funny Jim Carrey character that we all grew up with, although we loved it. Um, And then Jamie Kennedy destroyed it in the sequel. Yeah. Well, and it's crazy because you're talking about a showrunner writes for AMC, and then you're talking about Dark Horse that has that first look deal with Netflix that we keep bringing up. So could could it be a possibility? We'll we'll know. But – this is one to keep an eye on, even if it's just for the reading of The Mask. I mean, right. I like the cover A myself. I'm just getting the cover A. No no disrespect to Albuquerque. Great cover. But sooner or later, my budget hurts me. So this one I'm going just cover A on. Right. And it's important to also note Halt and Catch Fire is on Netflix, Brian. Yep. And from Vault Comics this FOC, we have cult classic creature feature number one. This is going to have the regular cover as well as that classic Vault Vintage Homage cover. This is also homaging that Afterlife with Archie. I love that B cover on this, but I'm torn because the cover A is pretty sweet. But for budget purposes, I'll definitely be picking up the Homage cover. Yeah, and again, full disclosure, Brian and I, we help produce variants for comicbookinvest.com, CBSI, and I love that B cover so much that even though we looked at doing a variant for this book, we felt like, you know what, we can't compete with that cover price cover B that is that fire. And the solicitation for this book seems really interesting, which is why we looked at doing a variant for it. Eons ago, visitors from outer space buried an item of unimaginable power in the primordial swamps that would one day become King Lake, a quaint little basin on the edge of Whisper, USA. Millions of years later, a comet's radioactive waves awaken the monster slumbering beneath the lake. As the beast feeds on America's sweet, delicious youth, brain slugs infect the quiet town, causing victims to vomit up kill-hungry, zombified skeletons. But for 17-year-old Jared Parker, none of this stuff matters to him. For him... This isn't about the apocalypse. It's about payback. Nothing, not his friends, not the undead, not even the end of the world will keep him from vengeance. And this seems like just a classic kind of B-cult monster movie to me, which is why we looked at doing a Legion of Monsters uh, vault vintage variant. But you know what? Like I said, they killed that afterlife with Archie uh, incentive. Shout out to the Wassel Brothers. Shout out to Nathan Gooden and Tim Daniel because that is a great cover. Right. And this also perfectly, we're hitting FOC Monday, but this book actually releases October 16th. So you're going to be right in the middle of that Halloween special that everyone's gearing up for Halloween. And I mean, to me, it has that like creep, the cover A has that like creep show type feel to me, that classic, yes. whatever you want to talk about, the 80s slasher movie, which, you know, strikes close to my heart because I'm all about 80s. And I had it up on the screen earlier, but I got the homage. On the left, you have the original cover from Afterlife with Archie. And then on the right, of course, you have that homage cover by Tim Daniel and Nathan Gooden. So kudos to that. Great covers. I'm really interested to read this story. And it's no mystery. We love us some Vault Comics on this channel. Then the last book we're going to talk about here tonight is X-Men number one. Spinning out of House of X, Power of X, we get X-Men number one. This is going to have a bunch of different covers for it. What we have on the screen right now is the regular cover and incentive variants. So we're going to have that regular line of Francis U cover. There's also a 1 in 25 variant, a 1 in 50 variant, a 1 in 100 variant, and then you also have that 1 in 500 art germ variant, but there's also a regular priced art germ variant as well as a bunch of, there's a premiere variant, party variant, you know how Marvel does it, but tell us about the book, Jack. Yeah, you know, truth is we don't know a lot about this book. We know that it's the dawn of X. Um, Jonathan Hickman is spinning, like you said, out of House of X and Powers of X. But we know that this is about Cyclops and his hand-picked team of uh, mutants. And I like that. I grew up on 90s 
X Men. Um, the X Men cartoon was my life as a kid, and I am a Cyclops fan, so I'm all about that. I actually like that one in twenty five Will's Portacio variant because I think it depicts that great nineties um, blue and yellow X Men team. Um, you mentioned the party variant. I think that's a good looking variant as well. Um, I think people are going to go for that art germ. But I think too many. I think that book's going to kind of be overprinted and go the way like a lot of our term variants end up going. But, Brian, we get this all the time on the channel. People will ask us, well, where can I get these books? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Frankiescomics.com has all of these incentives that you see on your screen right now below ratio. They've got that one in 500 for 300. They've got that one in 100 for 65 and so on and so forth down the line. I think it's like $30 for that one in 50 and 1250 for that one in 25. You can't beat those kind of prices. And while you're there checking out those incentive variants on frankiescomics.com, they also have their own exclusive variant for this book as well, right Jack? Right, and it comes with two covers. You've got that trade dress cover you see on your screen right there, as well as that virgin cover available in sets of two. But it's also important to note, this is a two-part set. You're also going to see the reverse side of this image with X-Force number one when that book releases and is solicited. Now, if this image looks familiar, it is an homage of sorts to that X-Men red cover that also was released on frankiescomics.com. So shout out to the team at Frankie's Comics, Kevin Field. I love this variant. I love the concept of the front and the back. And uh, I think all things X-Men are about to be real hot. So there it is. Make sure you check out frankiescomics.com to get those incentives. To get a lot of those books that we mentioned on this FOC show as well. If you're looking for 9-8 copies, if you don't see it on Frankie's, check out our other show sponsor, slabbedheroes.com. Nick Dortman carries a lot of those as well. Sometimes he has them up on the site. If not, Get in contact with them. See if he can get a copy for you, especially that 9-8 guaranteed. Nick does an awesome job at getting those for you. So in addition to the books that we mentioned here, we also have a bunch of later printings coming out, don't we, Jack? We do. Just like every week, a lot of books go back to print. A lot of covers are solicited at the last second, and we want to let you know about them. Boom Studios is releasing Once in Future, number two, the third print. Now, it's also important to note they've also got an FOC variant for that Something is Killing the Children, number two, which we did not have a cover image when we went over that book earlier, but be on the lookout for that one. IDW is releasing Canto, number three, the second printing. And, of course, Marvel always has a slew of later printings. We've got Absolute Carnage, Symbiote of Vengeance, number one, the second printing. Absolute Carnage versus Deadpool, number two, the second printing. Captain Marvel, number 10, the second printing, which has an excellent star design variant, very similar to the number nine Dr. Minerva design variant. We've got Conan the Barbarian, number nine, a second printing. We've got Immortal Hulk, number 23, the second printing. We've got Powers of X, number four, the second printing, and Venom, number 18, the second printing. So there it is. Those are all the later printings that we have coming out. Also, if you want to see the full final order cutoff list coming for this Monday night, make sure you check out simplemanscomics.com. We've got the whole list up there for you as well. But those are our picks. Like we said, some are spec, some are reader-driven, some are purely art-driven. Let us know in the comments, what do you think of these picks? What are you guys interested to get? And is there any of these titles that you wouldn't have known about if it wasn't for this FOC show? This was a show that was requested by Simple Man's Comics community, and that's why we're proud to present it, and we have fun with this. Like I said, it's Friday night, last call, we're having adult Kool-Aids here, it's the end of the week, we're talking about books that are coming to Final Order Cut Off on Monday night, and there's nothing better to talk about than that, because that is proactive comic book collecting. Right, and one more thing to be on the lookout for, we talked last week about Absolute Carnage number 4, and like happens with a lot of books, the FOC date got pushed back. So you still can get that order in for Absolute Carnage number four this week. Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when that FOC cutoff time is. Right. So I'm Brian Wood. And I'm Jack DeMeo, a.k.a. Mr. Bolo. Remember, buy what you like. That way you'll always be happy with your collection. <laughs>